Shalom, shalom, Israel. Shalom, shalom. I'm uh, Captain Yagan. I got Officer Ram. All right, so with that, uh, today's class we're going to teach uh, Be Living Waters. All right, Be Living Waters. I'm going to tell you why I chose this topic. Um, Israel, along with our walk and us in keeping these commandments, you need to continue to grow in this walk. You need to continue to grow in your faith, all right? Your faith shows and your work shows because what? The scriptures correlate us to a tree giving, bringing good fruit, all right? Um, so with that being said, go ahead, read John this, 7. This is the book of John chapter 7 and verse 38. He that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. You see that? He that believeth on me as the scripture has said. Meaning what? You have to be keeping the commandments to believe on the Lord. He says, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. I'm going to tell you all something. I want you all to think about a river. All right? A river is not a place where stagnant water with a, a dirt film is sitting. All right? A river is always moving. All right? A river is flowing with life. A river sustains life, all right? right. Not a, 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 if you're in a desert or a, a desolate place and you see a, a dip where rain fell in and the rain just got stagnated there, it's a dirty film there. You drink that water, you get a, a stomach virus, right. all right? right? So when we look at ourselves growing in this truth, we have to be like rivers of living water, oh, all right? Jesus. And one way that we do that, let's go to uh, First Peter's. Uh, two and two. All right. This is one way of many ways that we do it, but th this must be in the minds of our people that if they want to grow in this walk. Read what you got. This is the book of First Peter's chapter two and verse two. As newborn babes, desire the sincere milk of the word that ye may grow thereby. You see that. So the scriptures is telling you desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby so you got to ask yourself how are you going to grow on the milk because a lot of times these young men they have a lot of questions when it comes to deep things so on so forth the scriptures tell you plainly that more things are showed unto you than men understand so we have to desire the sincere milk because if we're not desiring the sincere milk we can choke on the meat Right. All right. You never right. give a, a, a three month old a steak because a three month old would do what? Choke on the steak. Right. All right. So um, um, with that being said, let's go to um, Isaiah chapter 28 and verse nine, because when we look at these scriptures, we have to find out what's the milk. All right. We have to find out what's the milk and how to apply it. All right. So when we when we apply it to our lives, it helps us grow. That's what the scriptures say. So read that. This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 28 and verse nine. Whom shall he teach knowledge? And whom shall he make to understand doctrine? You see that? Those have two question marks on it. He said, who is it gonna be? Who's gonna learn these things? Who's gonna understand the doctrine of the Lord? Come on. Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. You see that? Weaned from the milk, meaning what? You have to be on the milk first, mm -hmm. all right? I'm going to tell you all straight up, when I see a lot of young men come and have a forward spirit and they got a lot of different deep doctrines in their mind, somebody got to get in front of that young man and let them know, stop, stop, brother, look, focus on the milk. You're going you're gonna to choke, all right? And when a baby choke, a lot of times, if you don't know the Heimlich maneuver, that baby going to pass, right. all right? And that's why we have to look out for our brothers mm -hmm. And our sisters in this truth. It's always the brothers, though, for some reason. Also, yeah. you notice that. So, um, uh, read it again. Verse nine: Whom shall he teach knowledge, and whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Come on. Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. Come on. For precept must be upon precept. You see that? So you study in marriage, you're gonna be studying different marriage precepts, right? Come on. Precept upon precept. You study in the baptism, you're going to study different scriptures on baptism. The high holy days, you're going to be looking into the different precepts dealing with the high holy days. The new moons, every day, all these different things. All right? Come on. Line upon line. Come on. Line upon line. Here a little 
and they're a little. So the Lord's given us the blueprint on how to read the scriptures, all right? For so long, the world has been a mystery on how to read these scriptures, but the Lord's letting us know exactly how to do it, all right? Oh, so now, uh, let's go to um, 2 Peter 1 and 10, all right? Because uh, uh, we're talking about being that living water, being, being strong in this truth. And uh, we talked about studying uh, precept upon precept, but these are some other things that you have to apply when it comes to your walk, all right? Because a lot of times Israel comes in and, you know, for some reason, you know, they think it's a race. It's not a race, all right? We have to keep these commandments, but do it in wisdom, all right? Read what you got. This is the book of Second Peters, chapter 1 and verse 10. Come on. Wherefore, the rather, brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. You see that? The, the Bible says give diligence. Give diligence. How do you give diligence, young man? You find things that you, leadership needs to be done. You help around the school. You help whether it's a gift that you might have, the video team. Right. You might have a gift with, um, you know, might be an excellent reader. You might have a gift with um, different things around the campsite. You might have a gift with dealing with people with flyers or whatever the case. You might fold flyers, all right? Whatever you can do to help get this gospel out. The scriptures say that the vintage is plenteous, all right? Oh, so we have to continue to put our hand to the plow and find ourselves continuing to grow thereby. Read that part again. Wherefore, the rather, brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. Come on. For if ye do these things, Ye shall never fall. You see that? The Lord's letting us know that what? This is the key. This is one of the keys to never falling. All right? If you notice something about all the men that we've grown up around and all the men that you've seen that's been enduring in this truth, you always see them abounding in certain things. All right? Mm -hmm. Growing in certain things. Right. You never see none of the men of the Most High sitting still. Right. Like, for example, right. look at IUIC. We have grown so much, and we have so much further to grow, all right? So, uh, with that oh, being gracious. said, uh, let's go to um, um, Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 26, all right? Because a lot of times, uh, going back to making our call and election sure and being diligent, you know, uh, we can find ourselves really in a stagnant mode, all right? Sometimes you could go through a trial and it makes you stagnant. You could go through a trial and it hurts to go through that trial, but then that's why you gotta remember your first love that it talks about in the book of Revelation. Read that real quick. This is the book of Ephesians, chapter five and verse 26. Mm -hmm. That he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of the water by the word. You see that? So when you read Ephesians, the fifth chapter, it's talking about a marriage. But at the same time, remember, you constantly have to be cleansed by the washing of the word, all right? You oh, constantly please. have to be cleansed, all right? right? So now, um, with no further ado, let's go to um, 2 Ezra chapter 10 and verse 57. Because a lot of times, I'm gonna tell y'all something. To, to, uh, to be living water, to find yourself abounding in this truth, you have to make sure that you're not following the crowd. You got to follow the Lord, all right? That's right. So one of the ways that we follow the Lord is that we make sure that we understand that not many of us here understand the mission, all right? More don't understand the mission than the few that do, all right? That's why there's two-thirds that's not going to get the kingdom, 66%, and one-third that's going to get the kingdom, basically 33%, all right? There's some points on that, but the point is... Uh, 33 point something all right so the point is is to make sure that we understand the mission read what you got this is the book of second Ezra, chapter 10 and verse 57 for thou art blessed above many other you see that the lord said thou art blessed among many others come on and are called with the highest you see that and called with the highest come on and so are but few you see that and so are but few so the scripture is letting you know there's as many, there's few that the Lord's going to choose in these last days, mm -hmm. all right? And oh, we praise. have to be among that number. That's right. You know that song, When the Saints Come Marching In? We right. want to be in that number, That's all right? right. So oh, um, with, uh, let's go to uh, 2 Ezra chapter 14 and verse uh, 32, all right? 34, 14, 34. 
because a lot of times going back into that those distractions that might happen those distractions happen in time where in process of time whether it's different tribulations trial congregational marital trial personal trial health trials all right whether it's at the job whether it's anything and all these different distractions happen but then at the end of the day even our emotions could get in the way of those things so what does the lord say about that read what you got this is the book of second Ezra, chapter 14 in verse 34, therefore, if ye so be that ye will subdue your own understanding. You see that? The Lord said, don't lean upon your own thoughts. It said, it, the Lord said, subdue your own understanding. Do you know how hard it is to subdue something? You got uh, uh, to imagine, uh, imagine a paragraph where he said, uh, or a sentence, uh, the policeman had to subdue the criminal. That was not an easy task, right? Because it, it would have said that the the man put his hands or uh, behind his back and put the cuffs on. He had to subdue the criminal. So right. likewise, when you have to subdue your mind, it can be a daunting task sometimes. Mm -hmm. All right, come on. That's why Paul said, "I die daily." Come on, and reform your hearts. You see that? Reform your hearts, being renewed in the spirit of your mind. Come on. Ye shall be kept alive. You see that? You're going to get the kingdom. You're going to be kept alive. Come on. And after death. You see that? And after what? This this flesh dying? Come on. Ye shall obtain mercy. You see that? That's showing you that what? The mercy is when Christ comes on the scene to f perform the mercies that was promised to our forefathers. All oh, right? Praises. So when you examine the scriptures, you look at what, what was the promise to our forefathers and how to get the promise. And that's from you being diligent, being steadfast, all right? Oh, and so let's go to that real quick. Let's go to uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and uh, 54. 1 Corinthians 15 and 54. Uh, wait, wait, wait. I get it. I think it's 57. 15 and 57. 58. Because it's going, this is going right back into these certain trials that might arise as you continue in your walk. A lot of times there's going to be distractions that's going to come up. But you got to be steadfast on the mission, all right? You got to imagine a special forces team going and clearing a, a, a mission, all right? There's a lot of distractions in the room, all right? They call them, uh, you know, you have friendlies and, and uh, adversaries in the room. You got to be able to discern quickly and continue to move on through the progress, all right? Read what you got. This is the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 15 and verse 58. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast. You know what it means to be steadfast? That means to be strong. Mm -hmm. That means to be strong-minded. All right, come Versus. on. Unmovable. You know what it means to be unmovable? No one's going to come in and easily be able to shake your faith. All right? Now, a move or a certain life decision that a person might make, it's not going to easily move you in your walk. All That's right? right. Come on. Always abounding in the work of the Lord. Always abounding in your work. Always abounding in the work of the Lord. No, I got a raise at the job. In the work of the Lord. You see that? In the work of the Lord. So you, the Lord's letting you know, when you get that call where you called into this truth, the Lord hires you to do a job. That's right. So you have to find yourself putting your hand to the plow. Mm -hmm. Don't be late to work for the Lord. Right. Don't do a half-assed job for oh, the Lord. All, all right? Praises, all so praises. Um, let's go to, oh no, finish. For as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain you see in that? the Lord. You see that? He said, as much as you know that your labor is not in vain. Because a lot of times when people get distracted, they didn't see that tangible reward. So what ends up happening? They end up falling short because that tangible reward is for what you to see. Mm -hmm. But that Lord, that reward from the Lord that your work is not in vain, that's that work of faith. That means that you know that your treasure is in heaven. That's right. All right. Oh, so um, let's go to um, uh, Romans chapter uh, uh, 12 and 11. All right. So like, like, uh, like the topic of today's class is be be living waters all right meaning let's move let's make sure we're that we're that that progression all right mm -hmm. making sure that we're we're that 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 steadfast moving object like a like a uh, like a train all right like a freight train moving with freight on the back to make progress all right? right to bring freight to a destination meaning bringing the word to our people all, all right praises, all come praises. on this is the book of romans chapter 12 and verse 11 not slothful in business. You see that? The Bible says don't be slothful in business. I'm going to tell y'all something. 
when you see those brothers and sisters that they very, very uh, sporadic in the script uh, when it comes to in the body, that mm -hmm. you can depend on them sometimes, sometimes you can't depend on them. Right. I'm going to tell you something. The Lord and the angels are documenting that. That's right. The Lord and right. the angels are documenting that. Don't. That's why the Lord's not gonna tell you when He's coming, because mm -hmm. when He when He about to come, everybody be in here cleaning the floors with a toothbrush. Right. We're ready right. for the Lord. The Lord coming. Right. They got their basketball. They got their PlayStation. They be on point. Yeah. No, the <laughs> Lord ain't looking for that spirit. Right. He wants to see where your faith is at. All right. right. Come on. Oh, praises. Uh, fervent in spirit. You see that fervent in spirit. Read it all together again. Not slothful in business. Come on. Fervent in spirit. Meaning be at hot for the Lord. Be hot for the Lord's sake. All right. Fervent in spirit. Remember when you read Revelation 3 and uh, right around 15, 16, he said, I wish you would read the, either hot or cold. Mm -hmm. But because you ain't neither, you lukewarm, right. I'm going to just kill you. Right. All right? right. So the Lord's letting us know in these last days, we have to be fervent. All right. In mm -hmm. spirit. Right. Because this is the Lord's work. That's all right? right. Let's go to Luke chapter 2 and verse 29. I know I'm breezing through this. But I want y'all to be able to take some key points because I know a lot of brothers and sisters are watching and they are diligent. But some brothers and sisters, they lack. They lacking in certain studies. They lacking in certain wavering in certain things. They lacking in personal life decisions that other people make. We have to make our own personal life decisions for ourselves. All right, come on, read that. This is the book of Luke, chapter 2, verse 49. And verse 49. And he said unto them, How is it that ye sought me? Uh huh. Wish ye not that I must be about my father's business? You see that? He said, Know ye not that I shall be as my father about my father's business? So that's what we have to be about. We have to be about the father's business. Christ said, Look, my father and mother looking for me. Mom, dad, you ain't know I was about the father's business? Right. Wherever I'm at, whatever I'm doing, you know I'm doing the most high's work. And that's how we got to be. Right. All right. All that's praise. exactly how we got to be. That's right. Last precept. Let's go to uh, Isaiah 32 and 1 and 2. Isaiah 32, 1 and 2. All right. I want y'all to meditate on these things because it's important in our walk that we apply these things to our lives and be able to grow in this truth and be that living water. All right. Because what? We believe on the Lord. We're going to be that living water. Read what you got. This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 32, and verse 1. Behold, a king shall reign in righteousness. That's Christ, the king, the black Messiah. Come on. And princes shall rule in judgment. That's the 144 in the elect. Come on. And a man shall be as a, as a hiding place from the wind. You see that? A man shall be a hiding place from the wind. Imagine a tempest of wind blowing 100 miles an hour. What? That man is that hiding place. That safety. Come on. And ain't covered from the tempest. You see that? Come on. As rivers of water in a dry place. What the brother? What are we supposed to be? As rivers of water in a dry place. The Bible says we're supposed to be rivers of water in a dry place. So thank the most high God that the men that understand the mission are like rivers of water. Mm -hmm. The sisters that understand the mission, rivers of water in a dry place. Come on. As the shadow of a great rock in a weary land. You see that? So the Lord's letting us know in these last days, the men of the most high, the 144, the elect, the one third, they're going to be like the what? The these hiding places, these safety places, these rivers of living water. That's right? right. So with that, we say shalom. Shalom.
to make it so hard to serve God And why when I say that I'm a Jew it sound odd For years I've been walking around saying that I'm a black man I ain't saying that no more, it sounds wrong well, man This is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ Please subscribe to our YouTube channels Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us. Subscribe to our Instagram. Facebook, Twitter, and podcasts, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.